Hi, I'm Carly, aka Bookish Pixie Reads. You can find me on Instagram under the same name. I used to be going under a username called Scraps and Needles when I was sort of posting scrapbooking stuff and knitting stuff, but I've very much moved on to mostly posting books. So I thought a name change would be appropriate, and especially as like, I'm starting a booktube channel. Hello. So I thought a bookish name would be more appropriate. And so you can find my info down in the description and the caption. If, I would love it if you came and followed me, you know, whatever. But uh, I'm Carly. I've been a little nervous about starting a, a booktube account. I'm very overwhelmed by it all, but we'll see how it goes. My husband's been very encouraging because he's like, I'm always talking to him. And when I get fired up about a book, he's just like, you should start a channel so you can talk to people about this who've read the book. So here I am, that's what I'm doing. Um, I read a lot, I've always read a lot. And actually a few years ago, I kind of like fell off the wayside of it. I only read like maybe six books a year. And last three years or so, I've really gotten back on it. And like I'm reading, I'm reading all the time now, which has been fantastic. Um, mostly what I read, or what it feels like mostly what I read is mysteries. I kind of read, I read a lot of cozy mysteries Let's have a discussion on cozy mysteries. I have a love-hate relationship with cozy mysteries. For me, it's like watching The Bachelor. Like, I enjoy it, but I feel like I shouldn't enjoy it. Because a lot of the cozy mysteries, and I'm talking about the stuff that's come out in the last 15 years that are very, or about a lighthouse, or a bookstore, or a coffee shop, or a yarn store, you know, that are very specific in the amount of people that die in these shops all the time. It's ridiculous. I really like them. They're kind of my version of romance novels. But a lot of the time, not all the time, but maybe a good half the time, the books are not great. So I read them, but then I kind of like, why? Why did I read this? And then I keep reading them because I kind of like it. I like the gimmick, but sometimes like the follow through of the actual writing, I find a little bit in it. But I love all mysteries. I love like more of the hardcore stuff, or the more, more like, not cozy mysteries. Love Agatha Christie. Rereading Sherlock Holmes. Finding some of that a little more difficult than I remember it being when I was younger. But I love some um, juvie, juvie fiction. That's what at least it was called when I worked at Barnes & Noble. I used to work at Barnes & Noble. I used to work in the kids department, which was great. Um, but I love kind of middle grade fiction. That's what I've been hearing people call it lately. Middle grade fiction. Love that. Um, especially like the charming stuff. Noelle Stritfeld's Ballet Shoes is maybe my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time. Um, Hilary McKay's, uh, the cast, Hilary McKay's The Cast on Family books are some of my favorites ever. Ugh, can never not read them. I don't read a lot of like proper literary fiction. Sometimes I find they're all trying too hard. They're all trying to become the next best thing. The greatest American novel, you know, the great American novel. Like, stop trying so hard. Just tell your story. And I find that annoying. Um, but every once in a while, I get surprised. I read The Vanishing Half last year, and I thought that was stunning. But a lot of times I find them just underwhelming. I'm trying to diversify a lot of my reading, trying to add more authors of color, um, more just minority rep in general, there be race, ethnicity, foreign countries, um, sexualities, trying to diversify it all. We're working on that. Um, the one thing I kind of don't love reading is romance novels. And it's not actually the sex. It's just, I find just the storytelling, I get very frustrated with the, you know, it's all very over traumatic. And I'm like, y'all all need to take a breath. Um, and just sort of the tropes and just the, I don't know, I feel just every, the ones I've read recently, because every once in a while I'm like, I'm gonna try this. This looks fun. I'll try, I'll give this one a go. Every time I'm kind of let down. And most of the time it's because it's very overdramatic. And I'm just like, you know, like no one's life is like this. Just take a breath, please. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I read one years ago that was recommended to me that was sort of on the funny side. And I liked that one. What, I don't even know if you would call them romances, but um, earlier this year I read The Secret Bridesmaid by Katie Birchall. 
which I really liked and that was sort of described as a romance but the romance was such the like side salad course of the stake of the story and so I actually really liked that one. So if you have any recs on that kind of story I would love. I read a little bit of sci-fi fantasy, not a ton. Mostly just fiction, mysteries, general fiction, not a ton of literary. I'm working on doing reading a little bit more of um, new releases, which I used to not, I used to be very much backlist, and I still am a backlist reader, but trying to read more of the newer things as they come out. Oh, nonfiction. I struggle boss with nonfiction. Don't know what it is, even if it's a topic that I love or I'm super interested in. I can't. I just can't. And I just can't. And so lately, what I've been doing starting end of last year is that I've started listening to nonfiction on audiobooks. And that's been a boon to my life. I've gotten through so many more books and I've only done nonfiction. I haven't done fiction. I really like the sensory like activity and what happens in my head when I physically read a book. It's different for me when I listen to a book. So I've basically just been doing my nonfiction on audio for right now. And I'm still catching myself having to rewind and rewind because I get lost and I fade away because just nonfiction is just a struggle bus and I want to do better. Um, so that's what we're doing. My feelings on DNFing. Do not finish. All the respect to all the people that can do it. I cannot purposely DNF a book. I need to do better at that. Now, I'm not saying I never not finish a book. I not finish books all the time, but it's never a purposeful decision where I'm like, you know what? Don't like this. Bye. It's always a try, try, try. And if it's a library book and I've checked it out to the experience, the nine weeks or whatever after I renewed and renewed and renewed. Once I have to return it, I have to return it and then it just never gets checked out again and it doesn't get finished. Or if it's a book I own, I get lost in it and I get down in the mire and then I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna put it down and pick it up another book. I'll go back to it eventually and then sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, most likely I don't. But it's never a very purposeful, intentional decision to DNF. I'm trying to work on that, it's not for really like succeeding. But I'm trying to make purposeful intents to read what I think I will like. Yeah, so that's me. Again, I'm Carly, um, Bookish Pixie Reads. I would love it if you followed me on Instagram. And I'm also on Goodreads, and I have all the little linkage stuff in the caption below.